I think it's really important that you believe in yourself, to keep on going, keep on pushing forward. Whenever I lose at something or I'm not good at something, instead of being the person that, you know, cries in the corner about it, um, I like to, like, straight away go look back at the tape and see where I went wrong and see where I can improve on. So it's like win the fight or learn, right? So you yeah, went... Yeah, yeah. You, watch it. You learned from that experience and you... I liked the head movement there. Yeah, I had the little, sh little shuffle there. <laughs> Nicola Adams is a champion. She's overcome adversity right through her life to reach the top of her sport and become an inspiration to so many people. On our journey together through the Welsh countryside, I want to find out how she's combined her physical and mental strengths to navigate life's highs and lows and come out on top. <laughs> this is beautiful, isn't it? I love being here. Yeah, it's, it's not really often nice. I get out in nature, to be honest, so it's nice to kind of get outside. Growing up, what made you like step into boxing and give that a go? It all came about accidentally. My mum couldn't get a babysitter one night while she had the aerobics class on. Right. And um, she took me and my brother along to an after-school boxing class. And that was it. Um, I absolutely loved it. So I don't know if you um, know much about my journey and stuff, but as a young kid, I grew up in a household where it's quite chaotic. Like my mum, my mum and dad had severe mental health issues. So um, my dad was, you know, drug addict from a very young age, and my mum had like extreme OCD and anxiety and eating disorders. It's a real manic, like chaotic home life. Yeah. And what I've realised is that for me, exercise. I found it at a very young age. Exercise was like my therapy. It was what allowed me to release all that anger and frustration I had as a kid, like being in, in that environment. Do so you think, in a way, boxing was your therapy and your, your focus to get you through what you've experienced at home? Yeah, definitely. I, difficult um, growing up. My dad was abusive to, to me and my mum my at home, but boxing was a way for me to be able to defend myself, protect myself and know that, you know, I'll always be, I'll always be OK. I just loved everything about it. it was just something where I could really be myself, I guess. I'm so glad you found the boxing, because you know, when you're a kid, it's like sometimes things are so overwhelming and a lot of children turn to crime, to drugs, to alcohol. It could have been really easy for me to just Go down that flip path, the switch, yeah. yeah. I was 13, my, my coach just came up to me and he says, you, you look really talented. Have you ever thought about taking up boxing seriously? And that was it. I never, I never looked back. So from a year from starting and throwing the first punch in the bag, you were thinking about joint starting it as a career. Sort of yeah. Thing. Wow. And I was like, do you know what? This is this is what I want to do. I want to be, I want to be a boxer. And at the time, it was, I guess, unheard of because there wasn't that many female boxers about. Um, and then, obviously, having the dream of it being an Olympic sport was pretty much non-existent. But I just knew that one day I was going to be a champion. Did you experience, um, you know, sexism and, and racism in the sport as well? It was a lot more offensive just being a female in boxing than it was anything else. A lot of people said, you know, why don't you play tennis? Or women belong in the kitchen. They don't need to be in the boxing gym. There was, it was just a completely different stereotype, very, very sexist. Women, like, women's boxing has come so far, it's insane. I mean, it's, it's getting better, it's, you know, it's, it's come a long way, but I think there's still a, lot, a long way to go for representation-wise, for not just boxing in sport, but every, every sport. Um, women just don't get enough credit. So I already had retirement in my mind, just not obviously as soon as it happened. I was um, boxing in my last fight and in the first round um, my opponent caught me with a thumb in, a, in my eye and it tore my pupil in two places so I was literally... Oh no! Yeah. It was excruciatingly painful. Yeah, yeah, it was really painful. And you carried on the fight? Yeah, yeah. What? You carried on the fight and so what, did you win the fight? Yeah, I was, I was determined and I didn't want to lose my, <coughs> my title, my world title was on the line. So I wasn't I wasn't. How many give rounds up. did you go with one eye basically? Uh, ten rounds. You went ten rounds with one eye? Yeah. That's ridiculous. I can't believe that. So it's not the ideal way to leave the sport, but at least you won. Imagine if you had lost. Uh, yeah, I imagine if you had lost, you would have come back and said, no, nah, I'm having another fight, but Yeah. That is mad. I grew up seeing my family struggle and me struggling. 
and I never, I never wanted that for myself or my family. Um, so that was always my motivation. Whenever I, whenever I looked at other countries that were really good in boxing, I, I always used to think to myself, like, damn, like, why are they so good? And then um, I, I got talking to the coaches and the boxers. Yeah. And I think when you're fighting for more than just a medal around your neck, you can find that you can dig so much deeper than somebody else that might just, you know, have everything already. Yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. It's giving you a drive and just a, a hunger for it, right? That not many people yeah. will have. Yeah, you've got to, you've just got to have that, you've got to have that thing inside you that, that makes you want it more than anybody else. I can see that you've just had this amazing, like, mindset, almost like a positive cheerlead in your head, right? They're saying, like, yeah. you know, turn up, do the training, focus on the goal. Like, where do you think that mindset's come from, that, that voice in your head that's just continually driving you forward in life? I think I just have it in me to... Like, now I've got a, a child on the way as well, it's just I have something even more than me to fight for, so it just keeps me going, keeps me wanting to improve. Wanted to learn more, wanted to achieve more. Did you ever have self-doubt, like when you went into a, a fight or a competition, or did you just always just focus on positive and that was the outcome and you didn't allow those negative um, limiting beliefs kind of come into your mind? Yeah, like they'd, they'd come into my mind, but I'd, as soon as anything like that came into my mind, it'd be just straight out, out the other side. Um, I didn't like to dwell on that, that kind of thinking. because I felt like to me, if I was thinking about losing than I'd already lost. It wasn't the, the mindset that I, I wanted to have. I, I just think back to my training and everything I've done. I feel like everybody always used to ask me like, oh, how can you be so confident when you go in, in the ring? Like, how do you always know you're gonna win? And it was just because I'd done the work, you know, I didn't cut corners. I didn't skip the last set on the squat, squat rack, you know, I just, so when you, go into a, when you go into a competition or anything you do and you, and you know that you've done everything possible that you can, you've got nothing to yeah. fear. You just had a 100% commitment to everything. Yeah. So your career seems to be like scattered with like these amazing moments of like euphoria and just real achievements. But did you have any periods where you were down or you did suffer with your mental health at all? Yeah, um, I had a serious back injury in 2009. Um, I fell, fell down the stairs. I was packing my gym bag, getting ready for a competition and I left my bandages hanging out and I tripped over them, went tumbling down and fractured the vertebrae in my spine. Oh no, you fell right down the stairs? Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was out, of, out of boxing for a whole year. So that was really, really tough. Like I'd gone from doing like 500 sit-ups a day to not being able to lift my shoulders off of the floor. Right, I think we should have a little sit down now and just have a little moment just to like enjoy the view. I've had lots of different injuries like hand injuries, shoulders, shoulder operations, but my back was the worst one yeah. because you can't even like walk about, go see your friends, go out to dinner. You're just pretty much in bed all the time. So it makes just... you realise how um how like important exercise is for your mental health, isn't it? Because like the yeah. minute you're like in a hospital, you're like not active. Everything, your thoughts and everything starts to deteriorate so quick, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it really does. My, my friends, my family, um, the boxing team, like everybody just kept me mentally focused because there was times when I thought, well, what if, what if when I come back, I'm not you know, the same boxer I was? What if I don't box the same? What will it be like? I had such a strong drive to wanting to be, be an Olympic champion. Um, that that just took over and every week that I was able to do something new um, that I couldn't do before just gave me even more motivation to, to keep on going. Well, I've actually got, mo I'm into motorbikes, so I come whizzing through all the mountains, but I've never stopped and looked at this. Yeah, this is so cool. But no, it's so nice to get to know and just to understand like your mindset and the belief that you've had and that's inspiring, I think that's really inspiring to share that with other people. So many people just don't have that positive, like, cheerleader in their mind, they just think things are too difficult and they give yeah. up when it gets tough, but everything you achieve in life is after that, is through a struggle, isn't it? 